Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Planet X is Here, Irrefutable Evidence. Now, Planet X objects or stellar cores are old stars that have aged and gone through the red giant and white dwarf phases, and are now mostly the exposed core of a star. And this is detailed in my article 98, Planet X um, and Stellar Evolution, where I explain how stars age and go through um, this process, where they end up as stellar cores. Now, in figure one, we have two Yoko images, and these are X-ray images from the Yoko satellite from 2001. They are quite old. This is how long these objects have been here. And what we see here is this object starting to eclipse the sun, and here it has eclipsed the sun completely. The images are only eight minutes apart. And as we can see, that this object is very bright, so it's obviously emitting X-rays in the first image. It has the same, uh, the similar pattern on it that we see on the sun's surface and on part of the sun's corona, which obviously emits X-rays. So this object is also emitting X-rays. And in this image, we see another one of these objects. This one is clearly in the sun's corona because we see some of the corona plasma over it. And we can see this material draped across the object. And I, I talk about this in, in other th um, uh, videos. Um, this is basically the... Um, a sign of the object's ionizing envelope. And these objects are not planets, they cannot be the moon, because they emit X-rays. Now this one is uh, especially interesting because we can see actually structure on the surface of the object that is emitting X-rays. It's obviously emitting more X-rays from the right hemisphere than from the left. We can see regions where there are less X-rays being emitted. This is a region where there are more X-rays being uh, emitted. You can even see contours. These curved lines uh, or actually contours along the surface of the object and follow what you would expect uh, the contours on a three-dimensional spherical object to be. And it actually looks like there's um, some material draped across this object so that it forms a layer which is slightly raised above the rest of uh, the surface of the object. You can clearly see this here and there. It seems to be uh, some kind of a layer on top of the rest of the surface of the object. And it's very interesting, but this structure tells you that this object is emitting X-rays from its surface. And this means that it cannot be the moon, because the moon cannot emit X-rays. And um, we see some images here. This is from the Yoko satellite. These images are from the Yoko satellite as well. And this is a true lunar, a partial lunar eclipse, where we can see that the moon looks black. There is a little bit of stray lighting, but I believe uh, that has to be with uh, the image processing. These are very old images. The Yoko satellite only lasted until uh, 2001. It was then replaced by the Hinode satellite, and we see this is a Hinode image, both are X-ray images. And and we can see that the moon looks completely black in this one, which is to be expected because the moon does not emit X-rays. And this is another Henode image, X-ray image, and this is of a Mercury transit from 2006. And as you can see, Mercury looks completely black along um, um, in front of the sun because it's a planet, and so it does not emit X-rays. And here we see it. This is an ultraviolet image from the SDO satellite. And so it's seen 171 angstroms. It's ultraviolet. And the moon also looks completely black. This is also a partial lunar eclipse. And it looks completely black because the moon does not emit ultraviolet radiation.
Now, it takes the bombardment of a metal target or metal atoms by very high energy electrons to induce the emission of high energy ultraviolet photons from these atoms. The sun's corona and upper layers of the sun are highly ionized. They are very high temperatures. And so these the electrons are accelerated to very high energies. And when they bombard these atoms, it causes electrons from lower energy levels to leave these atoms. Then electrons from higher up fall down into these lower energy levels and at the same time a high energy photon uh, with the appropriate frequency and wavelength that for which uh, it's then uh, called an ultraviolet photon. It has the right energy, the right frequency, the, the right wavelength to be called an ultraviolet photon. But that energy is much higher than say visible light photons. Now, X-ray photons are even more energetic than ultraviolet photons. And so it takes electrons with even higher energy to induce atoms to emit ultraviolet photons. Um, and, sorry, I meant X-ray photons. So it takes... Uh, X, it takes electrons with a much, much higher energy to induce atoms to emit X-ray photons. So planets and moons are not hot enough to accelerate electrons to a high enough energy. Thus, planets cannot emit X-rays. So the object we see in figure one, which was clearly emitting X-rays, has to have a surface that is hot enough to induce atoms on its surface to emit X-rays. Thus, the object is not planet or the moon. The object has to be a star. Only a star can have a surface hot enough to emit x-rays. I know I'm repeating myself, but I've had so many questions on this, I thought I would make this quite clear. Now, in conclusion, the Yoko images shown in figure one provide irrefutable evidence for the presence of planet X objects or old stars in the sun's inner, um, in the sun's corona and in the inner solar system. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X researcher. Thank you for watching.